Hello everyone. We are back for another virtual story time. Here we are. We'll wait just a few minutes to see if anyone joins us. Hopefully we'll get a few viewers. Been doing pretty good each week. Thank you guys for joining us. We only have, let's see here, this week and next week left of our summer reading program. So if you guys haven't done so already, make sure you go to um, our site to register for our summer reading program, which is Meg's Library, or yeah, Meg's Library dot read squared dot com. And we'll post that link um, down below in the comments so you guys have a direct link to it. Make sure you register and you can participate and do fun little missions and keep track of um, your reading and your reading log is on there also and you can earn prizes. You can earn free books. Miss Emily has quite a few books in her office that you guys can come in and choose from when you win a free book so make sure you do that. And Let's see here, what else? Oh, this week's challenge for our summer reading program oh, um, on our Facebook page is called Book Cover Double. Um, for those of you not familiar with that, if you, you can always Google the hashtag Book Cover Double um, and you'll see where people have, um, have like, you know, just a children's book, like the one we're gonna read today and they will um, try to copy the cover by like maybe you have some toy trucks at home that you could you know make look like it's the cover of this book and then you take a picture of it and kind of just uh, let us know what the title is and what um, what book you are covering or copying <laughs> sorry my tongue isn't working today so just let us know which book you are copying the cover of and it can be a kid's book um, a picture book it could be a chapter book it could be anything so hopefully we'll get some submissions for that and we'll be able to share those um, I did one and we'll have to post that later uh, it's called when, when the library lights go out and we recreated that one on um, our library shelves so we'll post that later and hopefully you guys will We'll see what that is and create your own. Okay, and one more thing before we get started today, and I'll say it again at the end. Again, this is, um, our, next week is our last week for our summer reading, so it'll be the last week that I'm doing a virtual story time for a little while. And what we're going to do to end next week is we have these little packets made up here at the library that um, you guys can stop in and get to help you participate um, in the activity for next week for story time and what i'm going to be reading next week is jack and the beanstalk so if you guys can stop in in between um, now and next wednesday and we will have these at the desk for you and what it includes is just a little cup and here let me show you the finished product first this is what you guys are going to be able to make and then there's a little little bean down in there and that will start sprouting and it will be like there's a beanstalk rising right up and growing in front of your castle so you guys will get to um, watch that grow and see how big it gets just like um, in Jack and the Beanstalk where it leads him up through the clouds and through the sky to the castle okay so when you stop in and pick it up You'll get everything you need to make your very own little castle and beanstalk. You'll have a baggie full of soil, and there's a craft stick in there, and a picture of a castle that you can color and glue to the craft stick. And there's a cotton ball. As you can see, you can kind of add the cotton ball for the clouds. And one little bean in there also for you guys to plant and water and watch grow over the next month or two to see how big that gets, okay? All right, so don't forget, if you're able to stop in sometime between now and um, next week here at the Pomeroy Library for your Jack and the Beanstalk kit for our activity for next week's virtual story time. Okay, so let's get started, put everything up, 
from that and we'll get started with today's virtual story time and we are going to be reading the three little rigs so who knows what fairy tale this is a play on right right the three little pigs yeah see how it rhymes three little pigs three little rigs and this is written by david gordon and it is read with permission um, from harper collins publishing it's actually um, an imprint of harper collars collins publishing we want to thank them very much so without further ado here we go and uh, we are going to read the three little rigs Try to get close enough so where you guys can see this, okay? Here we go. There once were three little rigs who lived with their mama rig. She told them that the time had come for them to go out into the world and build their own garage. The first little rig went to the sawmill. He asked the loader for enough, enough wood to build a sturdy garage. Make sure to use lots of nails, the loader said. The first little rig used his crane to place the wooden, the wooden planks. With the help of an air compressor and a nail gun, he made four walls, a roof, and a door. The big bad wrecking ball knocked on his door and said, Little rig, little rig, let me come in. To which the little rig replied, Not by the chrome on my chinny chin chin. This made the wrecking ball mad. So he said, then I'll crash and I'll bash and I'll smash your house in. You just try, said the little rig. So the wrecking ball crashed and he bashed and he smashed the garage to pieces. Oh no. The second little rig went to the stone cutting factory. He asked the conveyor for enough blocks to build a sturdy garage. Make sure you use enough mortar, the conveyor said. The second little rig used his grain to place the stone blocks. A cement mixer helped him mix the mortar. He made four walls, a roof, and a door. The big bad wrecking ball knocked on his door and said, Little rig, little rig, let me come in. To which the little rig replied, Not by the chrome on my chinny chin chin. This made the wrecking ball mad, so he said, Then I'll crash and I'll bash and I'll smash your house in. You just try, said the little rig. So the wrecking ball crashed and he bashed and he smashed the garage to pieces. The third little rig went to the steel mill. He asked the pulley for enough beams to build a sturdy garage. Make good welds, the pulley said. Oh. Do you think this one will work? Let's see. The third little rig used his crane to place the steel beams. A welder helped him. But the big bad wrecking ball knocked on his door and said, Little rig, little rig, let me come in. To which the little rig replied, Not by the chrome on my chinny chin chin. That made the wrecking ball mad. Then I'll crash and I'll bash and I'll smash your house in. You just try, said the little rig. So the wrecking ball crashed and he bashed and he bashed and he bashed but he still couldn't smash the garage to pieces. I'll be back, 
said the big, bad wrecking ball. Oh no. Let's see. Then the third little rig heard the honking of his brothers outside his door. He was very glad to see them. Together, they would come up with a plan. Later that night, the big, big bad wrecking ball returned with the mean magnet and the cruel cutter. Little rig, little rig, let us come in, they said, to which the three little rigs replied, not by the chrome on my chinny chin chin. Then we'll crash and we'll bash and we'll smash your house in. Wait, shouted the third little rig as his brothers snuck out the back door. Save us, they cried to the cranes. Asking those cranes for help. Do you see that? The wrecking ball began to swing, the magnet began to pull, and the cutter began to cut at the third little rig's garage. Suddenly the cranes lifted the dangerous three high into the air. Then the three little rigs and the cranes drove to the steel mill together. I see that the mean magnet and the wrecking ball and the cruel cutter were all on what see who's operating them yeah the cranes so they pulled them up and away and are now taking them to the steel mill there the big bad wrecking ball the mean magnet and the cruel cutter were thrown into the melting pot Oh my goodness. And the three little rigs all lived happily ever after. There they are in that third little rig's garage, right? What was that third garage made out of? Do you guys remember? What did he make? That third little rig, what did he make his out of? Right, steel. Good job. What about the first little rig? What did he make his out of? Wood. Right, right. What about the second little rig? The one in the middle. What did he make his garage out of? Right. Cement and blocks. Very good, you guys. Good job. All right. So now we are going to put our book up and I'm going to show you what we're going to make today. You can make a garage like the three little rigs did, or you can make a castle where it's a little crooked. Let's hold it up on a book here. It's a little straighter. <laughs> He's kind of falling to the side, but do you guys see that? I used toothpicks just like this and little many marshmallows and let's set that right there see we've got some marshmallows and you guys can build anything you want with these you can make a castle you can make just a house you can make shapes I thought it would be fun to maybe try to make a garage like the three little rigs and what you're gonna do is every time you use a toothpick you're going to put a marshmallow on the end because that is what's going to connect each stick together. Do you see that? And like we can make a big square. How I started the, the castle down here was I just made a long rectangle, very long rectangle, and then kind of build it up and then put the little tower on top. You could even make a tower on this end and this end instead of in the middle like Miss Emily did. Or you can make it big enough to where you could put you know, two or three towers on it at a time. That would be really cool. You guys get to make any of the, these on your own. Whatever you make, you use and the um, marshmallows. Post a picture, let me see what you made. Because you can do some really cool things with these. So, so there's how you're gonna put those together. 
and it's just a big experiment as to what you can make and just be creative, okay? So then secondly, I'm gonna show you guys, we're gonna make a catapult. And this, I think with this spoon, I used the wrong spoon. So watch, here we go. Woo! <laughs> just kind of, so you can catapult marshmallows, um, but you know what? You probably wanna ask mom or dad or the adult that's with you today, if you're allowed to do this, right? Yeah, that would probably be a good idea. Make sure you have permission first before you go flinging marshmallows all over the place. And it might be a great thing to do outside so you don't step on these marshmallows and make a big mess and get in trouble, okay? So it'll just fling it up like that. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that real quick. Are you ready? Okay, so you need some rubber bands, craft sticks, and a plastic spoon. So you're gonna stack some of these craft sticks up. You're gonna use seven of them. I used seven of them right here. And you're gonna put one rubber band on this end. And then you're gonna use another rubber band on this end. Get it around here really quick. All right, to where it looks like this. Do you guys see that? Okay, so then you're gonna, you're gonna need nine of these craft sticks total because you're gonna use seven for the base, and then you're gonna use two to actually make your catapult, the spoon move and kind of fling upward. So you're gonna put these two together and then you're just gonna use a rubber band on the end, kind of like we did around the base, as tight as you can. Be careful you don't um, sting yourself with a rubber band, okay? So I'm gonna put it on the end like that, maybe scoot it up just a little bit more, just so you're able to open it up. See like that? And what you're gonna do next is this base that we made, you're going to put it down here. You're gonna kind of squeeze that base in between the two we just rubber banded together. And you don't wanna put it back real far because you'll snap your, um, sticks and you don't want to do that so you're gonna get it back there as far as it'll go and then kind of clamp it down as best you can you're gonna need mom or dad's help or an adult's help with this so the best thing is to kind of put your fingers right here are the two that are coming apart and then slide that back and then next what you're gonna do is you're gonna use one more rubber band and you're gonna put it as an X around to kind of hold those together. Do you guys see that? See how I did that there? Kind of just wrap it around to hold that there. And if you need to scoot it back, you can scoot it back to kind of give it a little more. So there's your base. And then we're going to attach the spoon right there. And you want to make sure when you're putting the spoon on that you put it right below where um, the part that goes in your mouth actually stops. So you're going to put it about right there. Okay, and then you're going to use two more rubber bands. See how I did this? I've got one here and one here. So I'm going to get these two on here and hopefully this one will work as well as my first one worked. Like I said, you're probably going to need an adult to help you because sometimes putting these rubber bands on can, can be a little tough sometimes. So you don't want to hurt yourself and sting yourself with a rubber band or have it break and hurt you. Okay, so there's our first rubber band on. See that? And we'll put it down almost touching the base there, the sticks. And then we're gonna put another one on just to be sure that the spoon stays where it's supposed to where it's supposed to be and that our catapult will work. If you guys don't have marshmallows, um, you can use little pom-poms that you use to craft with. You can use those. Um, something just light like that. I just thought marshmallows are fun. And 
are really light, so you can kind of catapult those out of a spoon pretty easily. Okay, so there, everything is attached. See how it's supposed to look? There's the front, and there's the side. Okay, so let's see if it actually works. Are you ready? Okay, in goes our little marshmallow. Let's see, here we go. I'm gonna flick it right towards you guys. Here we go. Woo! <laughs> All right. So hopefully you guys will get to make a castle or a catapult. Somebody's having a lot of fun with this catapult. That's really neat. So if you can, um, if you have these supplies at home and you're able to make one of these, make one. They're a lot of fun. Take it outside, um, shoot some little marshmallows into the air. Oh, I made that one right into my plant. And just have fun with it. Build a castle out of toothpicks, build a garage like our three little rigs. Just have fun, guys. All right, so it was so good to see you guys. This is kind of a short little story time this week. Um, like I said, if you get to build a castle or a garage like in our story, um, out of the toothpicks and marshmallows, post a picture of it. Or if you get to make one of these fun catapults, <laughs> go ahead and post a picture of one of those too, okay? And one more thing, just before I get off of here today, don't forget, those of you who want to, stop in um, and pick up one of these little Jack and the Beanstalk kits that we'll have available for you here at the Pomeroy Library. Um, and like I said, we'll have them available until from now until next um, Wednesday. Wednesday will be our virtual story time for these. And you guys can make your very own, create your very own little place for a beanstalk and Jack and the castle for Jack and the Beanstalk. Okay. Don't forget to stop in and grab one of these this week and next week. All right, guys. Well, it was good to see everyone and I'm glad you guys were able to join us and I will see you right back here um, on the library's Facebook page for our another virtual story time next Wednesday. All right, guys, take care and have a great week. Bye.